In the previous video, we dealt with the slightly boring but essential task of tidying up, tidying up after a spurt of coding, but we didn't really put any new coding in, maybe just a little conditional statement here and there. So in this video, we are going to do some coding, some beautiful dynamic techniques. You are going to love it. Let's get into uh, the download file. And yeah, the focus of this video is this routine. So remember what this routine does. It takes each name and then puts the name on a particular sheet according to how many times the name appears in the file. So Greg, for example, appears once in the file. That's why Greg Greg's name is on the 1L sheet. Now you'll notice I have gone through the file, put a little bit of text in here, names that appear once, names that appear twice, three times and four times on each sheet. So we have a consistent layout on each sheet, something in B3, something in B4 on 4L, 3L, 2L and 1L sheets. Now I emphasize that because consistency of layouts is super important when we're using Excel VBA code as we're going to see in a second. So let's get into the VBA editor. And at the moment, the names are just stacking up in cell A1. So in the top left hand corner of the spreadsheet, the names are stacking up there and overwriting, which is why we only see the last name in the database. So is that useful to us? No, it's not. Can we hand that off to Eric and say it's done? Absolutely not. The customer's not going to be happy. So what can we do? We actually want the names to be stacking up here, control C and control V. We want the names to be stacking up in a list here. So, but how on earth, how on earth are we going to code that? You know, we can't say uh, in VBA, you know, do the first one in B5, the next one in B6, the ne next one in B7. We can't put lines and lines of coded to do that. So what's going to help us? Well, we need a dynamic mechanism a dynamic mechanism. And I'm going to test this. Let's test this by just saying message box. And then we're going to say sheets. And then let's say uh, target sheet is the variable we're using. And then let's start at B3. So this is why the consistency of layout is important because this code is going to work on all the sheets. B3, and then we're going to use a piece of code to get us to the bottom of the range, to get us to the next empty cell. Okay. Do you know this supremely powerful uh, piece of syntax, which is, of course, dot end Excel down? So that's going to get us to the last cell in the range, the cell above the next gap in the data we could say. Dot NX add-on dot address, I'm going to say. So what's this going to do? This should just flash up a message box, which is going to give us the address of the cell that Excel gets to. So we're expecting it. It should be B4. I think it's going to be B4. So we're expecting uh, a message box to flash, flash up just with B4. And then you'll notice I put a breakpoint in the code. That's going to stop the code so we don't keep going this loop through this loop. That could take a while. Control, let's save the file. Let's run the code, see what happens. F5 key. Of course, we've got an error. So what exactly happened here? Sheets target sheets. Uh, is it the name of the, the, the variable name? I don't think so. Uh, range B3 message. OK. Um, uh, OK. Uh, OK, yeah. It's be, if I just put this after this line of code. So I was asking it to use the target sheet variable before I had assigned a value to the target sheet variable. So we'll just switch those over and then let's see what happens here. And let's put the breakpoint there. Yep, that should be fine, but we should get the message box flashing up and F5 twice this time. Okay, so it's, it's giving us this value of B4. So this line of code, Excel is understanding as range B4. Now that's interesting to us. We're beginning to understand this supremely powerful but difficult to understand dynamic mechanism. So we're getting to this cell B4. So may, maybe let's just try that. Let's just see what happens if rather than saying uh, range A1 here, we say sheets, target sheets, uh, dot range B3, uh, dot end Excel down. And then let's just see what happens. See if you can stop the video. Can you guess what's going to happen here? I don't think it's going to be quite right, but it is going to move us 
in the right direction. And it does mean we're going to lose some text, I think, but maybe we'll just put that text uh, back in. OK, yeah, I'm just going to hit the F5 key and let's see what happens here. OK, got another error here. Uh, that's because I forgot to take out dot address. You know, maybe I should edit these mistakes out, but this is what coding, coding is like. I'm an experienced developer. I make mistakes all the time. You know, as long as you saving the file, backing things up properly, it's not a problem. OK, so we can see Stacy Mayo is now appearing there. OK, so what's happening there? What we're seeing is we're seeing the names overwritten in cell B4. So what minor but critical tweak can we make to this code to get it working and to get it stacking the names up? You stop the video, see if you can do it yourself. We just want to move away from. Hmm. So what method is that in VBA? We want to move away from. Uh, the cell at the end of the range by one more cell. Now, this should be the piece of magic that makes everything happen. Unfortunately, on each sheet now, I've got a name where I previously had a helpful piece of information. But maybe we'll fix that in a second if everything works. So hopefully this is going to make everything stack up. Control S, save the file. F5 key. Yeah, we've got some names stacked up here. Greg's name is repeated because you'll remember from the previous test, we had Greg's name in before that. And then we've got um, names here as well. Again, Marion Kidd is repeated for the same reason as Greg's name was repeated. Roy is repeated here as well. And then on the 4L sheet, we've got some names here. So what, I want, what I'm going to do is just is just check this. So we've got uh, how many names we've got here. So we've got 15 names. So it's just going to put 15 here, do a very kind of manual check. Then we've got how many names here, control shift and down. Then we've got 19 names here. What am I doing here? Doing testing, of course. Uh, is this working? How many names have we got here? We have got, where am I looking? We've got 13 names here. I'm looking at the bottom of Excel, of course, outside of your screenshot. Then we've got two names here. So we've got two plus 13 is 15 plus 19 is 34 and then plus 15 again takes us to 34 takes us to 49 so do we have 49 names in our initial analysis and let's just yeah i'm just going to go to the bottom here yeah and doing the same thing we do have 49 names there so this seems reasonable enough. So I just did a quick test there, quite quite a manual test, you know, almost almost, you know, arithmetic in my own head. Let's just let's just clean this up and make it make sure it's it's all working. And I'm going to put these messages back in. So you might want to, you know, just skip through uh, skip through this part of the video. I'm just going to put these messages back in here. So on the fourth sheet, uh, what do we want to say here? So names that appear four times, then control C. I'm going to copy this in here. Names that appear three times. Good. And then names that appear twice here. That appear twice here. Then finally, names that appear once. OK, so now we should be ready to run the code. And we should have those names stacking up really nicely. So going back to the VBA routine here, uh, control S, save the file, F5 key uh, to run the code. OK, we've got two names in here, John Smith, Greg Hatfield. Then we've got our name stacking up here, we've got 13 names. And then we've got names stacking up here, 19. And then was it 15 at the end? And then we have 15 names here. OK, so seems to be working reasonably well. But what happens if we run the code again now? You might want to guess what's going to happen. Now we've got names already in the file. What's going to happen when we run the code now? Control S, save the file, F5 key, run the code. You can see our, our list has just continued. Our list has just continued. So why is that happening? Well, we've got to clear out the file of existing names before we run the rest of the code. So how are we going to do that? Well, there's some different, a few different ways we could do this. And I'm looking, I'm actually looking back at our clear data sheet, our clear data routine. Could we put some more code in our clear data routine, which is down at the bottom of the VBA editor here? 
and I'm just uh, deleting these uh, empty row empty uh, lines here okay so could you put some code in here just to uh, clear out uh, the values clear out the values that we want to or is there somewhere else where we could put this code hmm maybe we could just put the code in here because here we do distinguish we do distinguish here between the two types of sheets so here we're saying if uh if the sheet is not a list sheet so maybe we could just say if it is a list sheet then can we just um delete the code can we just delete the values and then see if we can integrate it all together then we're getting very close to completing this task so we got the same issue again how are we going to handle the issue of dynamism if you like how much data are we going to account for here now we could have some kind of dynamic solution you can see in my other videos how you'll program this to say go to the bottom of the range and clear it all but that's a little bit complex uh, for for this particular video so we're just going to say uh, what's the name of the variable here yep sheets counter dot range and then let's say b5 b5 to and let's say b2000 there we go and we're just we're going to say clear content so not clear if you say clear that's going to clear the formatting as well we just want to clear the content in this case and in this case the else means this is a list sheet okay so how is this looking is it reasonable enough so if if the sheet uh, is a data sheet this is going to happen if the sheet is a list sheet then we're just going to clear the contents and then after all this is done we want to call the macro that we've created that puts the names on the sheets so call names to sheets so that's quite a lot to test that's quite a lot to test so let's take a smaller step make it a bit more kind of digestible and allow us to understand what's happening if something goes wrong let's just um yeah let's put a break point here and that means before this line of code is executed so before we jump into the names to sheets routine we can just check through the file and see what's going on we want to check that there's no data on the list sheet so control s save the file f5 key run the code okay we've got to the call net call the names to sheets macro here just looking through these sheets and I can see there's no data there so this looks reasonable enough okay so f5 key continue the code and we've got our names coming in there so breakpoint get rid of that let's reset the VBA editor control s save the file so now we can run all of the code just going to hit f5 here and does it look reasonable yes we could see stuff flashing up there going to go to the analysis sheet delete everything although this uh, the routine does this deletion of course and then hit the f5 key okay and we can see our analysis appearing there and then it, that did seem a little bit slow to me but not too slow that it would concern me uh, but you can see as we're putting more things in the file more data formulae it is the efficiency is slowing down so that's something you know you've got to consider as a programmer going across to the list sheets and the list sheet look reason reasonable enough uh, what else can we do well we don't want to ask the customer to go into the VBA editor to run the code so let's insert a button here using the alt key to make sure the button lines up nicely and get unique names get unique names is the name of the macro that calls the other one and then let's just say let's just say process here process the data Okay, there we go so we should be able to just hit this button and watch the magic happen here and there we go okay good so we're getting very close to finishing this task but as we've gone through this process i hope you've kind of understood that there's no definitive best way to do a vba task 
when you're a programmer, you're always confronted with decisions. Should we do it this way? Should we do it that way? Should we use VBA? Should we use formally? So any approach has weaknesses, you know, depending on who you talk to. So in the next video, we're going to review this task. We're going to note down what the weaknesses are. And then we've got to think, what are we going to do with those weaknesses? Shall we program them out? Or is it something we just uh, inform the client? These are some of the assumptions I've made I'm informing you of these to make sure that you don't break the file. So this is an important part of the process towards the end of a VBA task. I'll see you in the next video.